get close, ball. All right. I love this game, and I love teaching this game and playing. And in the next few minutes, you're going to learn some tremendous ways of using your training aid so that you can go out onto the golf course and trust the feelings that it's going to build into your swing. And that's the whole purpose of playing golf is to be able to come out and play the golf course and not have to think so much. There's a famous teacher, J.H. Taylor. He taught in the 20s and he said that there can't be a nice, fluid, natural golf swing when the mind is involved in instructing the body. You know, there's a Chinese proverb too that says, a ship with many captains will sail up a mountain. And a golfer with a lot of swing thoughts is gonna spend a lot of time in the trees with squirrels. So if you wanna play golf and have fun playing by feeling, which is the way the pros play, then you need to work with your training aid. And when we're working with the training aid, we're changing habits, and habits is a messy business, so give yourself a lot of time and patience when you work with them to develop those feelings, see? and take your time. Don't substitute quantity for quality. It's a lot more important to practice and hit one or two good shots using the training aid than your normal swing transferring those feelings so that you can trust them when you go on the course. In fact, I use a 5-5 rule. That's when you're on the tee, on the practice tee, do five swings with the training aid and then five shots with the club developing a transference of feelings. That's the name of the game. Percy Boomer, a famous teacher in the 40s, said that we need to learn to play by remembered feel. And that's what happens when you work with training aids. You're going to begin to understand the concepts of the golf swing. Secondly, you're going to be able to change those habits by using the training aids. That's the greatest thing about it. When you apply training aids to your golf swing, they work very much like an orthodontist would apply braces to a child's teeth. They're put on each one and they work those teeth into a functional bite for that child. When you work with the training aids, they help your swing to become functional because they're based on solid golf swing principles. And then lastly, using training aids will help you to go back and have a place to go back to when your swing gets off a little bit, you can go back and reuse the training aids and keep working with those feelings so that they'll actually train you to develop a great swing. Now, when you're working with your training aid, inside is just as important as on the practice tee. So get a little notepad out and take notes on the principles that we're talking about and how to use it effectively. You may even want to clear a spot in the living room, get a little mat out, take a club, and make some swings to follow along and also get in front of a mirror and watch yourself using the training aid, then watch yourself using the swing because if you can see it and feel it, learning is improved up to 70%. And that's what we want you to be able to go out on the golf course and have fun playing the game. So make your practice effective. Now before we get into working with your training aids, I wanna go through some basic fundamentals of a solid golf swing. So much teaching today is fragmentation, little pieces and parts of the total golf swing, and when you try to put it together, it just doesn't work. When you learn the golf swing, you have to have an overall picture, and understanding of the swing, then you can relate the parts to that. In learning, we call this a whole part whole. So all the teaching that I do, I always take the big picture, which I'm gonna to explain to you now, and then when I break it down into the parts, they always relate to the total big picture. And in golf, this golf club was designed to swing around your spine, around your body in a circular pattern to come around, to contact the ball, to send the ball to the hole, and the ball gets to its destination because the circle has come around and sent it there. See, you don't have to try to do it. Now, in golf, how do you create and get a feeling for that circle? Well, first of all, you have to see it. You have to see the circle that I take that circle and I tilt it down and then the club comes around that and goes to the hole. You don't want to get tricked by trying to swing down a line, see? Because there's no centrifugal force in a linear thrust or you don't want to get tricked when you bend over lifting the club up and down and chopping at the ball, which are two of the major problems I see with amateur golfers. You have to stay involved in that circle. That's the key. And we use a tempo ball 
to get that feeling. So you can't control this ball. You have to let it swing, and then we begin to get that swing down so it contacts the ball. And as I mentioned earlier, see, you use the training aid, then you use the club. You do them together and you gain those feelings. Or in my Power Drives for Kids tape, my little son Blake uses this one. Beautiful way to feel the circle around, down, then we empower it. Kids love to do that. So that's the essence. Create the circle, get it to the ball, you get to the destination because you've been involved in the process of being a great circle maker. So let me get into the parts now of that circle and show you how they support the functioning of a nice, powerful circular swing. Ben Hogan said that the grip is the heartbeat of the golf swing. You have to have your hands placed on the club correctly so that as the club comes around its circular arc, the face will be square to the target at the bottom of the arc thus sending the ball straight to the hole. I'm going to use a hockey stick to show you how important it is to have your hands in a balanced position on the club. The nice thing about a hockey stick is it has a nice flat surface and it's in line with the face just like you should have with a golf club. So when you put your hands on here you can see that see my hands are in line with the face of that stick and that's the same way it should be in golf because as I go back and my wrist set, a good balanced grip will have the wrist setting on circle. Then as I come around the arc and the arm stretch out with centrifugal force, the face will be square at the bottom of the arc and then I should continue on around the arc. Now if my grip is not balanced with the face, let's say I take this grip which is very characteristic of beginning golfers, it may feel good at the start, but as I come around the arc, the hands stretch out and you can see the face is dead aimed to the left. And if I start playing that way, the only way to hit it straight is to come around and start opening it up. And of course, that's where a slicer starts trying to compensate. So in the grip, the hands have to be the face of the club. Balanced in order to get a good wrist set, and in order at the bottom of the arc to have the face square to the target to hit nice straight shots. Good posture is critical to allow the club head to swing around your spine in a circular manner and then back to the ball, sending it to the target. You have to have your back nice and straight. And this is a great drill, is to keep that back straight and whenever you bend your shoulders forward, you have to move the back of your lap out. Now you can see, as I can rotate backwards and forwards, my spine doesn't go up and down. And I see players all the time bend over like this. Now they're going to have to manufacture a swing, say, to get back to the ball. So in the swing, we take it up here, bend forward, have the back nice and straight, and then the swing can function. It's a lot like a football quarterback. When he sets up there, he's got his chin up, he's sitting down good, his spine's up, and he's in a position to move athletically to hand it off or run or pass. So if you want to have a good circular swing, keep that spine up nice and steady, balanced, and maintain that as you make your swing back and through the ball. It doesn't matter if you've got a great circular swing, a super grip, good posture, and a good wrist set. If your circle is not aimed to your target, you're never going to score well. So you always want to set the face first to the target, setting your circle. Then you take your nice stance parallel and left to the target, and then you can just have fun and you can trust that circle to get the ball to where you want it to go. Now remember, when you go out on the golf course, always set the face square to the target, setting that circle, and have fun. Be a circle maker.
Within the circle, there are three power sources. One is the power that you might generate from your body turning and thrusting. The other is the arms just swinging around your spine. But the major power source that I find that's missing in a lot of people's swings is when you can take those two power sources and then add a wrist set, see? A cocking of the wrist, a loading up, see? Then you really can get much more power as you come through the ball. There's a symmetry in the swing, which I'm going to show you with the hockey stick. See, in a good circular swing, there's a toe up, then the wrist set, then as the body uncoils and the club is brought through the ball, there's a squaring and then a resetting of the wrist, see? A set here loading for power. You come towards the ball, that power is retained, and then wham, it hits the ball, the ball's sent to the hole, and then the wrists have to re-cock, they have to reset on the way through. And so the power source of the wrist set is so important to feel and understand because so many people get too anxious and then they get the club up at the top and then instead of taking their time with a good solid wrist set, they get anxious and go towards the ball and then all the energy goes out this way away from them and they lose it by the time they get to the ball they have left is what they can push with their body. So when you can get those wrists set and you can start forward and retain that wrist set and then release that through to another reset over here, the power can be unleashed through the ball. Have you ever wondered how the pros get their power? They do it by storing up that power with a good wrist set, retaining it, and then wham, releasing it through the ball to a nice reset position up here. Pick up your hanger. It's one of the most versatile training aids that I've created. You're not going to believe the ways that I'm going to use this to help you develop your golf swing and lower your scores. In this section, I'm going to show you how to use your hanger to really develop power in your golf swing. In other sports, power is gained by making a good wrist set, like the baseball batter as he's waiting for the pitch. His shoulders are coiled back, his wrists are set, and as the pitch comes, he moves forward, retains the angle, and then swings through the ball, hitting hopefully a home run every time. The same thing is true for the soccer style kicker. In football, he approaches the football, he's gonna swing his leg in a circle, but he always cocks that leg. You'll see him warming up. He's exercising that lever so that as it comes in its circular pattern, the knee will stay cocked, and at the last second, he blasts through the football kicking it right up through the uprights. It's getting that nice set with the bat and with the knee that produces the power as they kick through the ball or hit the baseball out for a home run. And that's the same kind of power source that we have in golf. In golf, we want to have a nice swing on the back swing and forward with the wrist setting inside the circle, empowering the circle. Here's the picture you want to see. Let's just imagine this hockey stick is a golf club. I'm going to start up here like a baseball player and let my hands just go naturally around the circle. The wrist will set at a 90 degree angle and as I tilt you'll see that the toe is up, the wrist sets, I come through and around with the wrist setting on this side. It's when your wrists don't set inside the circle at a 90 degree angle that we get in trouble. Now hold this over me and tilt it down. And so this is what we want to see in golf. We coil back, the wrist set, 90 degrees. We start forward, the angle is retained. Then there's a release of the angle and then a reset on the forward side. Back and through. And as that angle can set and reset, there's tremendous power that's derived. What you don't want to do in golf is get back and let the wrist flop or lift it up where you don't get that nice 90 degree angle, that power angle in the golf swing. Because if you lose that angle, then all the power is going to go in different directions rather than through the ball sending it towards the target. Let me give you another picture. 
we go back, we set the wrist, we come forward to the last minute, and then the power needs to be released through towards the target. Look what happens if that doesn't happen. You may get an improper wrist set, and then on the way down, the energy goes out this way, away from you, and then all the power you have left is what you can push with your body, and you lose it totally. So having that nice wrist set, storing the power up, and then releasing through to the target is what it's all about. And that's why the hanger is going to greatly help you to gain that feeling. Also, you need to be able to support the weight of the club. Just like swinging a sledgehammer, if you swing back and you don't get this 90 degree wrist set, you won't be able to support the hammer. If it gets tilted to the side, it's going to really tear up your forearms. This is what happens with a lot of golfers. They swing back, the most common problem is the club head goes way inside here, and then when they lift up, they can't support it. So the wrist opens up, and then there's that casting motion. So when you use your hanger, you're going to develop that feeling for that 90 degree wrist set back and through, and you're going to gain the power that you've always dreamed of. I've set the hanger onto a hockey stick and attached it so you can see just how important it is to have your hands placed on the club correctly and how they really relate to the face of the club as your wrists make their setting within the circle back and through. And when you put your hands on the club with the hanger on top of the shaft, you always want to line up the hook to the leading edge of the club. Then when you place your hands, your hands should be facing each other and when your hands are facing each other, it will allow your left forearm, the shaft, and the face of the club to form this nice critical 90 degree angle. See that? That's the wrist set we want. It's important to be able to place your hands on the hanger the same way every time. So take your hanger out, put your hand out flat, and place the hanger down in the very bottom of your fingers like this so that the hook is right in the middle of your forearm, just like this. You also want to have the arrow pointing towards the target. Then you simply take a little mark and put it right where your little finger is on the hanger so that you'll get a maximum 90 degree wrist set every time. Now when you apply this to the golf club, you'll be able to consistently place it on there, find your mark with your finger when you take your grip, and then you'll have the hanger hook coming right to your forearm, which is going to tell you if you've made that 90 degree wrist set. When you set up and you place it on the club, you always want to have the hook here in line with the face. See, this would be too far this way or this way. So once you place it on there, have this lined up with the face, and then when you take your grip, adjusting your little finger to your mark, you'll get that 90 degree wrist set that we were talking about, and your forearm is going to be in line with the shaft and the face of the club, just like the hockey stick. Now from this position, this is where you should be at the top of your swing, that's the 90 degree set. You'll come around the arc, and then it will reset, and you'll feel it come to this 90 degree set on the forward. And this is what you should feel if you do this in your living room. Set it up like this, and start by doing this, feeling the set. This always stays on the forearm. As you set it, it just slides up. Because this is thicker than this, the thickness of the plastic, it'll bump your arm and you'll know that you've made that wrist set at the top. A lot of people don't get that feeling because they go back and they raise the club up and they don't wrist cock. They'll never know. But when you have that set correctly, you'll feel it bump your arm and you'll know you're correct. You don't have to guess anymore. And then as you come through the ball, you can have it reset 
and you can feel it on this side. So I would suggest in your room right now that you do these little drills like this, just keeping it on the arm, doing it very slowly, setting it and resetting it, feeling the hook touch and retouch to get a feeling for this because when we go out on the, the practice range shortly, I'm going to show you some drills that you can do by actually playing golf shots to develop that wrist set here, through the ball, and to this side. Here's another way to use your hanger. It will help you to build a good feeling for a one-piece takeaway. All the pros do it. On the backswing, your inner body needs to coil back and the arms just stay very passive. The triangle formed by your two arms should stay intact and then the arms separate and the wrists set into that power position. Common problem is people get a little anxious and they lift the club or even worse, they get back this way with the club head and then they can't get set correctly. How do you develop that one piece takeaway? Simply take your hanger, put your arms in it like this. You can take a club or just use it separately and then you want to just turn the body to here and then the wrist set. See the triangle right there? Here and then up. Here and then there. So it all stays together. And that's the way it should be when you go out and play. You should have that feeling as you take the club back, it will put you in a position and it will allow you to just fire that club through the ball in that nice circular arc. Right towards the hole. I think that might even go in the hole. Now from this angle, the hands stay passive. I just simply call the triangle back to here and then the club goes up and sets, the wrist set. And you can practice this right at home. Just coil the body back, the triangle's back here, and then the wrist set, and I'm in a perfect position to begin my downswing through the ball. Now watch how I do it with my normal swing. I'll practice first, coiling back, setting the wrist, and then firing. When you come to the practice tee, it's important that you always integrate the setting of the wrist within the circle of your swing. And I've built a little apparatus here with some shafts stuck in the ground and a piece of pink tape across. And you might try to do this in your backyard to get a feeling for the circleness and also the wrist setting within the circle. Be sure that you always get your little finger on your mark and that you set up so that you can feel this nice freely setting motion at 90 degrees to your wrist, see? This stays on. And then start out by just turning your body and setting the wrist like a baseball player, around and resetting, see? Here and there. Then you can bend down and get into your golf stance, always turning the body first, setting the wrist, returning the body and resetting. And then you can creep in under the tape slowly. You'll actually see the club go on the other side of the tape, see? Back, set, through, around, reset. Now the problem would be a person lifting going back or coming over the top coming down or when they're coming through scooping trying to go down a line. So this really helps you to see and feel that circular arc within the circle is a setting and a resetting. The hook will touch here around and touch here. Work with it. It's fantastic and it'll give you the feeling you need and also you'll be able to see it very clearly. Now I'll play a shot to prove the point. I don't recommend that you do this at home. Remember, it's a circle. Set, reset, not down the line. Action. Remember when you're on the practice tee, quality is a lot more important than quantity. So take your time, get your grip correct, the hanger fixed, and work on smaller little swings before you get into bigger swings. Also, Remember to do five with the hanger and then five without the hanger. 
build feelings that you can trust when you go out and play. That's the whole purpose of working with the hanger on the tee. The first drill is to get your feet together and make little short swings back and through over the top of the ball. Be sure that you keep the hanger on your arm as it sets and resets around the circle. Then you can move into the shot and play little easy swings, making sure that you set it and you reset it on the forward side. Let the club just capture the ball and send it to the hole. The hanger is not designed to hit big, long, full shots. It's made to just develop feelings that you can integrate into your full swing. So I don't suggest that you play full swings with the hanger. But the first drill is just feet together, short little swings, feeling the setting within the circle, move into the ball, set it, and reset it, and you won't believe how nice and straight the ball will go. After you've mastered this feet together, toe up to toe up drill, then you can move into a drill I call a creep drill because we're going to creep into those balls and just react, letting the hands set and reset as I go through and pick up each ball to the target. You want to get a little pacing motion going with the arms like a big pendulum, creep in, and then just let that circle just capture the ball. Just go on down, let it swing back, set and reset over the top and through, over the top and through. And what you'll be in to feel is just a nice pacing of your arms back and through. And you could do this right in your living room. It's a great little tempo drill. Set and reset and then apply that to the creep drill. Here's two preset drills that you'll enjoy working with on the tee. Set up to the ball, get your normal stance, take your grip, and then set the club up on your arm like this against the forearm. Just here with the 90 degree reset. Then from here just Coil your shoulders back, wind up, and then swing through the ball. Set, coil, and swing. The second one is a version of the first. On this one, we set up normally, set it. We just simply turn our wrists so the club shaft is parallel to the target line, and then we move up and play a shot. So we're just going to set it on the arm. Bring the club parallel to your target line, up. You can see that set so nicely, and then all the way through to the reset position. Very popular drill with most teachers. Here, here, set, and reset. For those of you that are having problems with a slice, the hanger is the best cure. A slicer characteristically, as he comes around the arc, he will try to scoop the ball and push the ball down the line. And what that does is that opens the face up and then the ball will spin off the direction the face is looking. Also, the wrist will lock and you can see that the hanger stays open as he goes through and the ball spins off to the right. So in a good swing, we want to have that come all the way around. The face needs to close on the ball to send it straight. A good drill for that is you need to learn to swing more to the right of your target. Bobby Jones understood this because he said the toughest thing for a slicer is he has to learn to swing in the direction that he doesn't want to go. So to help you feel that is to set your club at the target and then turn your body at a 45 degree angle, your shoulders and your feet, to your target line. Rehearse setting and resetting and this will really help you to swing inside out and to feel the wrists coming through and resetting in the circle. Set, reset, and you won't believe how straight that you're going to play the shot. In fact, you might even get a little pro hook on it. I would suggest that when you practice that you tee up the ball like I've been doing through my practice. It will help you to capture the ball better with the club head. Also, the purpose of all this practice is to help you build those feelings that you can retain or recover when you go out onto the golf course. In fact, when you're out there, you could just imagine that hanger on the wrist when you're playing and that feeling will come back to you. Now to wrap it all up, this is a drill that I really love because it's gonna help you to feel the overall swing and how the wrist set within that swing. So you simply set up to the ball, 
put the club in front of the ball and move forward to a nice reset position. Just pose right up there. Then you go back and set here and through play the shot and come back up to the reset. So it's called start from the finish. Set up, feel the finish, set and reset and hold that pose. For chipping, you want to be sure that you keep your weight to the left and there's no body motion. You want to get in close to the ball and the ball is played well back of the bottom of the arc. I like to play it just off of my back toe so that my hands will stay ahead of it. A chip stroke is a pendulum motion, but you contact the ball first with a nice crisp contact. The hands always stay ahead, and that's a key element in a chip stroke. A key problem that we have is the tendency to want to try to scoop the ball where the club head starts catching up with the hands and then there's a sculling or hitting behind the ball. You want to imagine that the club and the arm form a straight line very much like a train with this being the engine and this being the caboose. So the engine pulls the caboose through. Pick up your hanger, put it on the grip just as you did before, lining up the hook with the leading edge. Then when you take your grip, you want to choke down a little bit. You want to play it off the back foot, like I showed. Then lean forward. And when you're in this position, you should see a nice straight angle from the shoulder to the head of the club. That's what we want to do, is just have that going together. And you'll notice that uh, when you start practicing, there'll be a tendency to want to go under like that with that instinctive reaction. But that's why this is so great, because it's training you, see, to get the feelings so that when you go out on the golf course and you set up to a chip, you're almost going to be able to visualize the hanger on your arm, staying there, moving it back and forward like a pendulum, working the ball to the hole. So take your time with your practice. Hold it on the arm, ball back, and just work backwards and forwards like a pendulum. Get a feel for the distance. In this situation, I'm using an eight iron, and in a good chip, you want to get the ball onto the green and roll it to the hole. You want the least amount of air time and the most amount of roll time as you're going up to the hole. Take your time, feel the stroke, and let the hanger give you the feelings that you need to be great. If you chip like you putt, then the hanger is going to help to reinforce the correct feelings in this way also. So in that situation, you would put the hanger through your arms, like I'm going to show you in a second how you putt, and then you would then just simply work the hanger back and forwards like you putt keeping the arms moving forward and not breaking down. So again, set up. And this is great because you can aim the arrow right to the hole. You can see if your shoulders are square. The shoulders must be square in a good chip shot. Then it's straight back and straight through. The top putters in the world use their upper body to make a pendulum motion back and through. The shoulders control the putter. You don't want any body and rolling of the hands when you make your putting stroke. So you want to have the hands just riding right underneath the shoulders, making that nice pendulum motion back and through. And to get that feeling, you can gain that by using the hanger. You just simply slip your arms into the hanger and clap your hands. This will give you that balanced feeling of your shoulders, and then as you move your shoulders back and forth, you'll gain that feeling that you need to have the control in your stroke. Also, when you set the hanger over your arms, you want to line up the arrow at the top of the hook, point it towards the hole. When you work with this indoors, you can look down through the arrow, find the edge of a carpet, and then as you practice this nice pendulum motion, you'll see the arrow going along the edge of the carpet. 
or a crack on a wooden floor. That's the feeling you want to have. You shouldn't see that arrow going around, but back and forth in a nice pendulum motion. After you've worked with that, transfer that feeling to your golf stroke and then practice putting back and through. And you'll see that ball going right in the center of the cup time after time. And that's the purpose of working with the hanger, is to train yourself to gain the feeling that you need so then you can transfer that to your normal swing. You may even like to work with the hanger with your putter. If it feels comfortable, then go ahead and stroke some putts using the hanger and the putter together, working on the pendulum back and through towards the hole. I've enjoyed doing this tape on the hanger. If only I could use this when I'm out playing on the tour, I'd win every one of them. But you should have that feeling when you're out on the golf course that when you set up to a normal shot, it's just as if that hanger is right on your club and you have that remembered feeling so that when you swing back and through, it's just a piece of cake. Get in the hole, baby.